Hello and welcome to Solutions. This is the first episode of the third series of podcasts for solution-focused hypnotherapists. Wow, season three already. I know. And we've had some great responses from our audience. I'm Kathy Eland. And I'm Trevor Edels, and we're both experienced solution-focused hypnotherapists. Today, we're looking at the blood-brain barrier. Why is that? Why do hypnotherapists care about the blood-brain barrier? Well, if, like me, you were originally taught that the blood-brain barrier, the BBB for short, was a solid barrier that protected the brain by keeping everything out. Well, that's not quite true. And the brain can be affected by the stuff that's circulating in your blood. So you're saying that the blood-brain barrier is a highly selective, semi-permeable border of endothelial cells that prevents solutes in the circulating blood from non-selectively crossing into the extracellular fluid of the central nervous system where the neurons reside. Well, that's what Wikipedia says. <laughs> Interestingly, microglia can make up to 10% of the total cell population of the brain. They're the macrophages of the central nervous system. They supervise the number of synapses, control neuronal firings, and remove debris. They also play a part in the immune response and regulate the blood-brain barrier. Tight junctions create a paracellular barrier in epithelial and endothelial cells, protecting them from the external environment. So the whole point of the blood-brain barrier is to prevent or at least restrict pathogens, the things that cause disease, crossing into the brain and also stopping the diffusion of solutes in the blood. Solutes are basically lumpy stuff that have now been dissolved. Yeah. Uh, the barrier also restricts the passage of peripheral immune factors like signaling molecules, antibodies and immune cells into the central nervous system. It does this to insulate the brain from any damage that might be caused by peripheral immune events. And large or hydrophilic, that's water loving molecules, crossing into cerebrospinal fluid. The barrier also allows hydrophobic molecules. These are the ones that don't like water, for example, uh, oxygen, uh, CO2, hormones, and small non-polar molecules to cross and actively transports metabolic products such as glucose across the barrier using specific transport proteins. Yeah, uh, there is a problem, though. The barrier can become leaky. In other words, it becomes more permeable, allowing harmful substances to pass through, which can damage the brain, leading to inflammation. This can be caused by... Gut dysbiosis, i.e. infections. A leaky gut. Autoimmune disease. Mental health conditions. And of course, stress. And vagus nerve dysfunction. And all of these have inflammation as a basis for the problem. What are the signs and symptoms of a leaky blood-brain barrier? Well, they are... Reduced mental ability, difficulty concentrating or multitasking, short and long-term memory loss, collectively referred to, as we all know, brain fog, through prolonged activation of mast cells. These are part of the immune system. Yeah, chronic fatigue that just does not improve with rest or sleep. Headaches or migraines that come on suddenly, become worse with standing and grow more severe as the day progresses. Memory loss or other cognitive decline, which may lead to dementia and Alzheimer's disease. Huntington disease. Increased risk of schizophrenia. Mood disorders particularly anxiety, depression and schizophrenia. Peripheral neuropathy, i.e. damage to peripheral nerve cells or muscular sclerosis, basically the immune system attacking nerves. Seizures. ADD, ADHD, autism spectrum disorders. So basically some of the things that we deal with. Yes. 
One Harvard study found that wheat creates a leaky gut in everyone because a protein called gliadin found in wheat and gluten increases another protein, zolulin. Zolulin weakens the tight junctions of the gut lining and the blood-brain barrier, thereby contributing to a leaky gut and a leaky brain. There are some suggested factors that contribute to a leaky blood-brain barrier. In fact, quite a long list. They include... Inflammation, high levels of inflammation in the brain are linked to an increase in the BBB permeability. Stress. Acute stress activates brain mast cells that secrete pro-inflammatory cytokines. Bacterial infections, bacteria in the brain, increase matrix metalloproteinases, known as MMP activity, which may induce the breakdown of the BBB. Toxins. Lipopolysaccharide, LPS, induces inflammation. Mold toxins. These trigger inflammation and increase oxidative damage in the brain. High-fat, high-calorie diets. These may increase oxidative damage, hypoxia and inflammation in the brain. Intestinal permeability, leaky gut syndrome, changes in the gut have been associated with BBB permeability. In acute liver failure, the damaged liver releases MMP9 into the bloodstream, which may damage tight junctions. Diabetes or high blood sugar, changes in glucose levels cause oxidative stress and inflammation. Disrupted sleep-wake cycles. Chronic sleep disturbance decreases glucose transport across the BBB and increases inflammation. Anything that triggers the oxidative stress in glial cells and pericytes, these are cells found at intervals along the walls of the capillaries, this damages the BBB and causes structural and integrity problems. Hypoxia. Lack of available oxygen can damage the cells and tight junctions of the BBB. Homocysteine, an amino acid. At high levels, homocysteine alters tight junction function and causes BBB dysfunction. Excess glutamate, an excitatory neurotransmitter. Overstimulation of glutamate receptors in the brain may cause BBB breakdown. Other agents may also increase BBB permeability. These include aspartate, taurine, ATP, endolithin-1, NO, MIP2, TNFA, ILH, bradykinin, 5-HT, histamine, thrombin, UTP, UMP, quinolinic acid, platelet activating factor, and free radicals. That is a lot of factors. You're absolutely right there. Other suggested factors include autoimmune disease, hydroma, excess alcohol consumption, environmental toxins and heavy metals, poor brain blood flow. Uh, yes, the blood-brain barrier is similar to the lining of the gut wall and many things that help with leaky gut are recommended for a leaky BBB. How can solution-focused hypnotherapy help? Well, firstly, we can help people manage their stress levels. Secondly, we can help them with their sleep, making sure they're able to get enough of it. And thirdly, we work with people with depression. We might suggest that they avoid gluten for a while to see whether that has any effect. A healthy gut seems very important, so we could suggest they eat plenty of vegetables, take probiotics and eat fermented food like kimchi or kombucha or water kefir. Other things that are generally recommended are to drink coffee and avoid alcohol. OK, so just to summarise, the blood-brain barrier controls what gets into the cerebrospinal fluid in the brain from the blood. If it's not working properly, all sorts of problems can occur. People suffering from some of these problems may turn up as our clients. If a client has depression, it's worth bearing in mind that there may be a medical condition causing it. Yeah, yes, good summary. Okay, well, that's about it from us. 
I hope you found that interesting. I certainly did. Uh, next time, we'll be looking at the post-hypnotic suggestion. Until then, it is a goodbye from me, Cathy Eland. And it's goodbye from me, Trevor Eddles. See you next time. Bye. Bye.